Is food a common source of angst in your home? Or do you constantly find that mealtime is just aggravating because you cannot get your child to eat? Well, if this is you, you're gonna love this video because we're going to talk about how to get your child to eat. This how-to series has been a joy for me to put on. We've already gone through listening, focusing, caring, and now we are going to focus on eating. We are going through the top, how do I get my child to search engine responses. And this is simply because I want to give you the answers to your burning questions. You parents work so hard and you've probably tried anything and everything that you can think of to address these challenging behaviors that your kids are throwing your way uh, to the point where you are searching YouTube and Google to find answers that actually work. And so I am so thrilled to do these videos and this how-to series because you parents deserve quality answers. I've searched Google, I've done the work in that sense, and I am super discouraged, honestly, to see what is out there and what articles are telling parents to do. No wonder you all are discouraged. They insult your intelligence, they tell you the same things over and over, and then you wonder why things aren't working, and many parents then think, well, there must be something wrong with me, or there must be something wrong with my child. And I want to bring something new to the table, something maybe that you haven't considered or, or heard of before. And so that is what this how-to series is all about. Now, if you are not familiar with Fly in the Wall Counseling, let me tell you what I'm all about. So my name is Jillian. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor, and I quit my job as a child therapist to equip parents to handle their kids' behavior. I saw that working with children was a joy but it would take such a long time to be able to make progress with a child. And in my business, Flying the Wall Counseling, I can meet with parents and we can see significant change within a matter of months. So equipping you parents with proper information and techniques and strategies is certainly the way to not just impact parents, but also to impact children. And I know parents that your heart is for your child's life to be impacted for the positive. And so that is what we can do working together. And I love that these video series can help you on your journey to allow you to give your best to your child and give them the best chance for their future. So this how-to series is going to equip you with hopefully some new and interesting ideas to consider in raising and parenting your child. So today we are going to jump into talking about eating. Now, some of the common things that you've probably heard are, oh, a child won't go, you know, they won't go completely hungry, they're going to eat eventually. Or you've probably heard, you know, give them some choices and let them choose what they want to eat. Or, um, you know, don't give them snacks during the day. Have them eat only big meals. Or if you don't mind, let them just eat little snacks throughout the day. These are some things that you've probably heard before and they may work for some kids. But my guess is if you're watching this video, those things probably haven't helped address your case. Now, one of the things that we are really focusing on in this how-to series is the first step of how-to is to learn the why. So we need to learn why is your child not eating? Why are they 
giving you a whole lot of struggle around food. Knowing why is going to be able to equip you to pursue a how-to that is actually effective. So is your child giving you a hard time because they simply want power and control? So for example, you know that your child loves chicken. And today they're saying they hate chicken and they never want to eat chicken ever again. But you know they really like it. That's probably a power and control issue. Or does your child have some maybe food sensitivities or sensory processing issues where, you know, certain textures of food just don't sit well with them? Um, let me tell you, I do not have any food sensitivities necessarily. Um, but, well, I, I do have a gluten intolerance, but um, in terms of allergies, I don't have any food allergies, but let me tell you, the texture of eggplant, forget it. <laughs> I can't do it. It makes me physically nauseous. And so there are some things that people just don't like the texture. And you as an adult probably have things where you just don't like the texture and you're okay with not eating it because you're in charge of you. But when it comes to a child not liking a texture, all of a sudden we maybe get a little bit more pushback because maybe it's something that you really want them to be able to like and to add into their diet and it's just another battle for you to go through. So is it textures? Is it sensitivities? Is there a food allergy? You know, maybe your child is actually reacting in a way to the food that causes their throat to feel funny or their tummy to feel funny um, and they just don't like the reaction to it. So that could be what's going on. If that's what's going on, we're going to handle it very different than if your child is just trying to put up a fight or a battle and gain some more power and control. Now for older kids, you may even be dealing with things like um, eating disorders or, you know, views of what's cool to eat or what's not cool to eat, um, what they think is healthy or, or not healthy, um, if that's even of interest to them. So those are some other things that could be going on. What is the reason your child is refusing to eat? Maybe they're really actually not hungry or they don't have proper hunger cues. Or maybe your child is eating too much and that's a battle that you're facing. So maybe they're overeating and you don't know how to get them to stop overeating. That's another issue that could be going on. So many different whys that can be at play here. And so determining the why first is going to be extremely important. Now, from this point on, I'm going to be tackling the why of, you know, my child is just kind of putting up a fight. They're just trying to gain some power and control um, because the food sensitivities, the, you know, the pickiness, that's a little bit different um, in terms of the medical ramifications. And so if you have questions about medical issues, feel free to throw them in the comments. And um, I, I am not a medical doctor, of course, um, but I would love to point you in the direction of some people who could help you with your situation if that is something that you need. But let's talk about why kids tend to put up such a fight around eating. Eating is one of the very few things that kids actually have full control over. You really, I mean, maybe you've tried this, but really you can't shove food down somebody's throat. And let's fast forward to, you know, maybe kids who develop eating disorders. The major common thread between people who have eating disorders tends to be this idea of control and a desire for control. Eating is something that somebody absolutely has control over, and kids in this world do not have much control. They are vulnerable, and they are constantly having to answer to adults. So the few things that they can assert control over, 
they can be really persistent about. And so eating might be one of those things. Um, a couple other ones are going to bed or sleeping. Can't make a child fall asleep. Uh, also going to the bathroom. So these are things that are common struggles, right? Those things where kids can assert power and control are the things that we struggle with them the most about because they are searching out and seeking for ways to pursue it, especially if they have a personality that's bent towards wanting to be in control, uh, maybe a little bit more of a type A type personality or someone who's strong-willed um, and very persistent in getting their way. So that is why this is such a common struggle. And so if you are dealing with it, just know that the harder you push and the more authority you exert, the more they're going to push back. So <laughs> if you are struggling with your child regularly and battling through this, the continued battle is going to allow them to continue to push back. So if we're wanting to get kids to eat, if we're wanting to get kids to try new things, we need to step back and not be so forceful and authoritative. So comments like, you know, I'm the parent, you're the child, um, you need to listen to what I say because I said so. Those are all things that are not going to help your situation here. So um, keep those things in mind when you're having conversations about food and when mealtime is coming. Now, of course, choice is something that you can utilize in these situations, but you're not a short order cook and you don't want your child planning your menu and sometimes you just need to make something and get dinner done with or get lunch done with. And so giving your child choice and letting them rule the roost around this is just not realistic. Now, there are other ways that you can add choice into the mix, maybe the order of what they eat food in, uh, or the, you know, you have a few different vegetables that you know that they'll tolerate. So yes, choice can absolutely be a part of this, but again, if you are just constantly battling with them and you've tried choice already, what is the next step? What else can you try? Well, part of what could be going on is that they're just not in routine of this. Kids fight food that you try to give them just like adults tend to fight diets. We all know that diets often are not successful for people and that it's really hard to stick to new dietary changes. So if we are trying to change a child's eating habits, we have to understand that it's just as hard for them to have to go through that change. Now, when an adult goes on a diet or chooses to make dietary changes, they're the ones in control. They're the ones making the choice. They're the ones willfully doing that to themselves and willfully going off of it as well. But when it comes to changing a child's dietary practices, they don't have control over that. So not only are they having to deal with the changes, but they're also having to deal with somebody else regimenting what they can and cannot do. If you had someone coming in here and telling you, by the way, you're making all these changes and I'm not taking your input, you would struggle a lot too and push back and rebel and maybe not feel like eating. And here's a little bit more on why that happens. When we have somebody feeling like, when we feel controlled, when we have someone over us and we feel discomfort or stress or frustration, many people experience that in their stomach. We feel stress in our stomach and it can impact our appetite. Cortisol has a direct impact 
on our appetite. And so when we add stress to mealtime, or we add stress to the idea of food, we disrupt the natural human body's indicator of whether or not we're hungry. Uh, you know, when you're stressed and frustrated, sometimes you feel sick to your stomach. Or we produce extra acid and it ruins our appetite. And so it may be that there's so much stress and frustration around eating that your child isn't able to feel hungry and doesn't want to eat anymore because of those natural physical cues being disrupted in their body. So the more we can remove stress, frustration, and struggle from mealtime, the more likely you're able to have some change in that area. So start to really assess that. How much stress is going on? Is your child exhibiting signs of stress when it comes to food? Start to pay attention to the things that they are showing. Now, also, when it comes to changing diets, there are some foods that are really harsh to kids' tastes and their palate. They may not be used to some of those stronger tasting foods. Now, it tends to be that foods that are dense in nutrition also have a stronger type of flavor. And the foods that kids tend to love and gravitate toward have you know, either preservatives or sugar or fat or salt, things that are very pleasing to the body and hit that pleasure sensor and cause them to want more of it. And other things just don't hit that immediate gratification for them. And they actually can taste pretty offensive. So it may be that you need to slowly introduce those type of flavors into their regular eating. So whether that's sneaking some things in here or there, um, or finding foods that they do enjoy that somewhat mimic those other stronger tasting foods, that could be helpful. So for example, broccoli. Broccoli is a really strong flavor, and if kids aren't used to broccoli, you may need to introduce them to it. So here's some, here's a little tip. If there's a food that your child really, really doesn't like, go ahead and search that in Google and search for the type of family, food family that that is in. So for example, broccoli is a type of a brassica. You can try to find other types of brassica foods that would mimic a little bit the flavor of broccoli and find something in that list that your child can tolerate. So some other brassicas include cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, Swiss chard. It includes things like, um, goodness, I'm gonna draw a blank. There are so many different foods though within brassica, right? So you can look at all the brassica foods and see if there's something that you can kind of sneak into the foods that they're already eating. So is there something that they like a teensy bit and you can add more of over time and then their palate will be built up to be able to tolerate something like broccoli down the road. So I encourage you, look up the food family that something is in and see if there's something your child can build up a tolerance to so you can introduce some of those things down the road. And just know there's going to be a transition period. A lot of times parents just want kids to suddenly be on board and accept vegetables or accept meat or accept different types of foods and it just doesn't happen that quickly. There's going to be a period of time where your life is going to be rough. <laughs> it's going to be a little rocky and it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be inconvenient. But if you want your child's habits to change, if you want them to eat certain things, you have to stick to a plan and you have to go through that period of turbulence 
to get where you want to be. For your child to know that you're not changing your mind, that this is the way it's going to go, you have to stick to it and get through it together. Now, I don't want it to be miserable for you. And like we said, we want to try to reduce stress around food. Um, not just because in that immediate moment, the type of feelings they have in their stomach can impact whether or not they're hungry, but also we don't want stress and food to be a relationship that lasts long term because that can have significant impacts on somebody's health and wellness in the long term. So we wanna to try to decrease stress as much as possible. So you can absolutely incentivize eating quality things. Um, even if it's a little bit and you build up over time. So maybe you reward them for having the tiniest little bit. And then after they can do that on a regular basis, you increase the amount that they have to get their reward for. So maybe they have to eat two bites at first. You know, let's, let's bring it back one small bite for a couple of weeks. And then they've mastered that. So now we can move to two small increments. Celebrate the small increments. Incentivize the small increments. When I worked in a day program for kids who had just come out of a psych hospital and were transitioning back to normal life, we would incentivize them to eat their vegetables by allowing them to have chocolate milk. You would not believe how many kids would give up the battle, scarf down the veggies so that they could have chocolate milk. Now, your child may not be incentivized by that. Maybe it's something else. Um, and maybe it's not a full serving of vegetables. Maybe it's a bite, but you can start somewhere and incentivize to take out some of the stress and start building that healthy habit. There are my tips on how to get your child to eat. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can get the rest of the how-to videos and be sure to give a thumbs up if you liked this video. You all have a great time eating with your kiddos and feel free to share what victories you had in the comments below.